is V.S. Pritchett's Fly in the Ointment. Context! Who was Pritchett? Why was he writing what he was writing? Let's find out now. V.S. Pritchett was a writer who was particularly well known for his short stories. Um, there are probably two main aspects that we need to take into account when we're looking at the fly in the ointment uh, in relation to Pritchett's context. The first is that his father, Walter, had many business failures. Uh, he was seen by many as professionally deceitful uh, and he had a very bad uh attitude and casual attitude to credit which means that he was often uh, loaning more than he could ever afford uh, to pay back and that actually led to the family being declared bankrupt during uh, our Pritchett's upbringing uh, so they faced many financial troubles and difficulties. Uh, it could be that uh, the character of Harold's father is actually representative of Pritchett's own father in this respect. Also, the story was written at the time of the Great Depression uh, that first started in America, but it did spread over to Great Britain, um, and it was known to take place during the 1930s, and it was where Britain's world trade fell by half, which basically led to mass unemployment across the country. Now, Harold's father is representative of one of these businessmen uh, who was a casualty of the Depression in this era. Uh, so, in that sense, uh, the setting of our story almost acts as a microcosm because it's representative of the majority of towns and cities at this time who are facing these difficulties in the, in the UK. Plot. It's about a young man, Harold, who visits his father. Uh, he visits his father who suffered some great financial difficulty and his business has actually become bankrupt. Uh, the two have a fairly dysfunctional relationship and that's shown when Harold meets his father. And throughout the meeting, we get to grips with the idea that the father isn't as cool as he tries to seem about his bankruptcy. Uh, it's almost as if he's not just trying to convince Harold, but also himself. Um, but it's his thirst for money uh, which keeps being subtly put across uh, to his son and to readers. Uh, the title of this story is very, very important. Uh, the fly in the ointment is, is a saying um, that basically means that there's a small but irritating flaw or problem that can spoil everything. So the fly in the ointment for Harold's father is money, or perhaps greed, uh, and that greed that he can't live comfortably without always wanting more. Uh, and this is what he can't escape even at the end of the story, when Harold does reluctantly offer to help him. Okay, the setting at the start of the story is very important. The metaphor, dead hour of a November afternoon, creates this lifeless atmosphere, uh, which links to the context of the recession and uh, the Great Depression in the UK. Uh, using the word ceiling links to this idea of there being no room for improvement, and it's a hopeless situation, as does mud-coloured cloud, creating the idea of gloom, depression, emphasised by the alliteration, and the adverb alarmingly. Finally, the simile, like new tombstones, show how these businesses, even those new ones, have no chance the unemployed men dribbling slowly past also act as a subtle reminder of context here. Even the description of the firm as a ghost is very important. This metaphor has connotations of death and change. This is what was happening to businesses at this time, and that's what Pritchett's trying to get across through this description to readers. Characterisation. Okay, starting with the character of Harold, the omniscient third-person narrative is crucial as it allows readers to experience Harold's thoughts and feelings about his father. There are lots of negative connotations here that have led to the bankruptcy. Uh, Harold feels his father can't be trusted and perhaps that he even deserved uh, this the situation that he's found himself in. 
Uh, likewise, though, on a more positive note, it's as if Harold feels a sense of relief uh, that his father now has no money because he is aware that money is the root of the problem and any evil here. He sees that greed as being removed. Yet the repetition of must also illustrates that he feels very sorry for his father and a sense of responsibility. Uh, therefore, there is perhaps a duty of care here, or he does still love his father. Um, he wants to help, and that makes us feel further empathy as readers. And at the same time, he's also embarrassed for his father. That's why he needed to get out of the taxi early. The phrase, the likeness of a convict in his cell, is also very interesting, as it almost shows that, again, this is what his father deserves, uh, perhaps imprisonment here, and uh, it shows Harold's definite disappointment in him. Moving on to the character of the father, it's important we talk about the relevance of the two faces. The simile, like a soft, warm and careless dab of innocent sealing wax, show how this is the outward persona he wants people to see, one that's warm and welcoming. But as we know, wax melts, therefore it's false. If we look deeper, we see the real face caused by greed the smaller one. The adjectives here are very, very important. The lexical set of purplish, scared, shrewd, babyish, greenish shows that he is untrustworthy and deceitful. These have very negative connotations linking to his selfish nature and his greed for money. Uh, he is driven by money. Perhaps this links to Pritchett's portrayal of his own father. Explore how Pritchett memorably depicts the relationship between Harold and his father. Pritchett immediately depicts the relationship between Harold and his father as a memorable one as he shatters our stereotypical preconceptions of what this should be like. Most readers would approach the idea of a father-son relationship as one forged by a strong bond, encompassing love, compassion and a caring outlook towards one another. Unfortunately, it is the father's greed for money or the fly in the ointment, so to speak, that sadly destroys the foundations of this relationship. It never had a chance. One way in which the dysfunctional relationship is portrayed is through the way they awkwardly converse with each other through P Pritchett's dialogue, and by how Pritchett vividly conveys their feelings. As when Harold first arrives, the father says, Come in, Professor. This was an old family joke. He despised his son, who was, in fact, not a professor. The tone here is quite bitter and not how readers would expect a father to address his son and the imperative come in shows that the father is used to demanding things of Harold which is why readers are likely to empathise more with Harold over his father. Also, the fact that the omniscient third person narrative refers to this as a joke shows how the father is ignorant and that he may be hurting his son's feelings whilst the harsh verb despised illustrates how he is incapable of just being content and happy with what his son has achieved. He always wants more. No wonder that the son is described as being anxious in his father's company. Here, Pritchett could be looking to demonstrate how greed and a lack of self-satisfaction can be detrimental to family relationships. After all, he experienced something very similar with his own father growing up. Thus, Pritchett leaves us with the powerful, slightly depressing idea that this relationship is unsalvageable. Yes, it is true, the relationship may be a product of the times. After all, times were hard, and Pritchett could be using their relationship to symbolise the difficulties Britain faced at the time in dealing with a recession. Ultimately, though, Pritchett is taking the purest relationship of all, parent and child, and showing how money and the desire this causes can corrupt anything even that which is seemingly incorruptible.